This is part 67 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to call server-side ASPX page method using jQuery Ajax. Here is what we want to do. We're going to have employees data in this database table TBL employee. We're going to include a function in the code behind file and we want that function to retrieve data from this database table. And we want to call that function within the code behind file using jQuery Ajax and display the data as you can see here. So let's see how to achieve this. The first step here is to create this database table which I have already done. Here is the create table script and here we have the insert script to insert some test data. I've already executed this script. The next step is to create a stored procedure which is going to retrieve employee by ID. So this stored procedure has got an input parameter ID. This stored procedure is going to retrieve ID name, gender and salary columns from employee table where ID equals whatever value we pass in for the parameter. So for example, if we pass employee ID 1, this is going to return us that employee's details. All right. So let's now flip to Visual Studio. So from the ASP.NET web application perspective, the first thing that we need to do is include the connection string within the web.config file. So this connection string is pointing to our sample DB database which contains our employees table. The next step is to add an employee class to this project and this employee class is going to represent this employees TBL employee table. So let's go ahead and add that employee class. and let's call this employee.cs and this class is going to have four properties ID name gender and salary which are going to correspond to these columns in TBL employee table in the interest of time I have already typed the required code for those properties so let's copy that and paste it within our employee class notice all of them are auto implemented properties now the next step is to include a method within the code behind file of this webform onesaspx So let's go ahead and write a method here. This is going to be a public method. This is going to return the employee object and let's call this get employee by ID. And let's pass a parameter to this function. Let's call it employee ID. So we pass an employee ID to this function. This function is going to retrieve that employee details from the database table and return the employee object back. So we have to write some ADO.NET code here. So I have already included the required ADO.NET namespaces, system.configuration, system.data and system.data.sql client. In the interest of time, I also have typed the required ADO.NET code. So let's copy this from this notepad and paste it within our get employee by ID function. So what are we doing within this function? The first thing that we are doing here is creating an instance of the employee class and then we are reading the connection string from web.config file. Using that connection string we are creating the SQL connection object and then we are creating the SQL command object. So basically we want to execute this stored procedure using this SQL command object. Since that is a stored procedure, we have to tell that to the command object using the command type property of the command object. And then this stored procedure has got a parameter, so we need to associate the parameter and its value to the command object. We are doing that using the parameters collection property of the command object. And then we are opening the connection, executing the command. And whatever result we get, we are looping through, retrieving ID name, gender, and salary values from the database table, and populating the respective properties of the employee object, and returning the employee object. So all this is straightforward ADO.NET code. It has got nothing to do with AJAX, right? So this is ADO.NET. Now, we want this function, get employee by ID, you know, this function is actually present in the code behind file. So this is a server-side function. We want to call the server-side function, you know, using jQuery Ajax. And if you want to do that, you have to do two modifications to this function. The first one is convert this function to a static function. And the second change is decorate this function with web method attribute. And this web method attribute is present in system.web.services web method. So that's the namespace, system.web.services. Alright, so those are the two changes that you need to do for this method to be called from jQuery.
Okay. Now the next step is to design this web form so it looks like this. So in the interest of time, I have already typed the required HTML. So let's go ahead and copy that from our notepad and paste it within our web form. So in the form section, I'm going to paste the copied HTML. And if you look at this HTML, it's straightforward. So we have the literal text ID. So let's actually build the solution and let's view in the browser. So we have that literal text ID and then a text box and a button and a table. So basically, we have that literal text here, input element of type text, that's the text box, and input element of type button, and then we have a table. And this table has got three TRs, each TR has got two TDs. And within the first TD, we have the literal text, you know, name, gender, or salary. And within the second TD, we have a text box, you know, to display the name, gender, or salary. So straightforward HTML there. I also have the ready function wired up within the script section. Okay, so now when we click the button, we want to retrieve the ID that the user has entered in this text box, issue an AJAX request, call the function in the code behind file, retrieve the employee data, and then display name, gender, and salary within these three text boxes. Right, so let's see how to do that. So the first thing is we need to wire up click event handler to this button btn get employee. So since that is an ID, let's use the jQuery ID selector, find the button and associate a click event handler. So let's find the text box where the user center ID. The ID of the text box is txt ID. So let's use jQuery ID selector again, find the text box and use the val function to retrieve the value the user has entered. Let's store it in a variable. Let's call it EMP ID. Now we want to issue the AJAX request. So let's call the AJAX function and we need to specify the options. So the first option we need to specify is the URL. So what's the URL we want to call? We want to call this web form one dot ASPX and within that web form we have a function. What is the name of the function? Get employee by ID. So that's the URL that we want to call. Webform1.aspx forward slash get employee by ID. Let's issue a post request and to specify that I'm going to use the method option and let's specify the content type that we will be sending to the server. So the content type that we are going to send to the server is application for slash JSON. So since we specified that we are going to send a JSON string, the data that we are going to send to the server need to be converted to a JSON string. And there are two ways we can do that. You can do that by hand or you can use json.stringify method. I'm actually going to do that by hand. So within the string, we are going to have this JavaScript object and what is the name of the parameter? The name of the parameter is employee ID, right? So employee ID colon and where is the value for that employee ID going to come from? It's going to come from this variable EMP ID. Okay, so employee ID equals employee ID, whatever the user has entered. And finally, let's append this closing brace. Okay, so that's the data that we want to send to the server, to the code behind file. And the type of data that we are expecting back from the server is JSON. And finally, we want to associate a callback function if the request completes successfully. So this is the function that gets called when the request completes successfully. And this is going to re uh, you know, receive the JSON object. And if there is an error, then even in that case, we want to associate a callback function. And this function is going to receive the error. And let's alert that error. OK. All right. So if the request completes successfully, what do we want to do? We want to retrieve the name, gender, and salary property values and display them within the respective text boxes. One very important thing to keep in mind here is that the JSON object that is returned by ASP.NET will have property D attached to it. 
So if you want to retrieve name property from this data object, you will have to use data.d.name. Okay, so we want to display name within a text box which has got ID txt name. So the value of that is going to come from the data object dot d dot name. So we need to do the same thing for gender and salary. So the text box name here, I mean the ID is gender and the property is gender. Similarly, the text box ID here is salary and the property name here is salary. All right, so let's go ahead and save the changes, reload our page, and let's enter employee ID 1, get employee, look at that, we get employee ID 1 details. Let's try employee ID 4, we get employee ID 4 details. So here we have the web method code in the code behind file, and here we have the HTML, and finally the jQuery code. Thank you for listening and have a great day.